Hey Clashers, it's right weekend time again and you can see already we have some nice attacks going but we want to jump in as well onto my favorite district which is the Wizard Valley and not only that we are getting attacked right now by Stephanie and Muitaba, which is uh, kind of cool to be honest because we're slowly catching up to all of those people who are invested a ton of money and well that's actually what we're going for so let's jump into the first uh, attack and let's take a look at the as i said the wizard valley as i said as well that's the district which i love the most to attack the reason for that is no rocket artillery Th that's pretty much the reason right like the rocket artillery is deadly it is really really crushing it's really really threatening to your troops and that's why it's uh, pretty nice if the district has no rocket artillery the goal always is that we're going in with hopefully being able to uh, smash this base within two attacks. That's like the goal for us. And I think the army is set. We're going to take those two out with our rocket loons. And then we're smashing everything in this flank from the like 8 o'clock side I would guess. And then maybe some back end action with the flying fortress. Because guys, flying fortress is actually pretty OP. Um, if you use it correctly and if you have like the spell capacity and the troop capacity actually unlocked which are which is allowing you to bring a lot of rages which allows you to bring a lot of flying fortress but let's get started with the rocket loons with the giants just to be honest just put everything in there in this corner uh, try to take down as much as possible reset the inferno tower so your giants are surviving a couple of seconds longer that's always nice rage in remember don't delay it too much because, uh, well, overall they're lasting for two attacks, so it's no problem if you deploy them early. And then we're going to try to take down as much as possible. We have uh, two great cars right now, which are working there, which are working on this flank, trying to push further inside. And if you can actually get to the front tower, that's great. But we already placed the second, or like, or like the only jump spell uh, to get further into the base, to so then actually be able to take down more air targeting defense because. You guys love, you guys know my approach, right? Or the approach which I love to do, which is always the approach of diving in with somewhat of a kill squad and then further later sending in a flying fortress for the back end. I just love this approach. I think it's such a strong, um, so, such a strong attack. So that's what we can snipe as well. The top side, we do not need to take care of the car, uh, of, the, of the cannon at the top uh, 12 o'clock corner because that's the part which our flying fortress is going to take down. So. That was unfortunate and the second archer i mean it's pretty much swag at this point but whatever so they're going to get a bit more of uh defensive right metal so whatever we're fine if they get a bit more rewards over there that's totally fine so let's dive into the second attack or more like the planning of the second attack because we want to get our army set we want to have our, our army ready this is still the the bug right like the past attacking rate I have no clue why, because if you take a look at that, this is our first raid of this weekend. Like, we have not attacked them this weekend yet. Maybe it's from the last weekend. That could be, I don't know. But it's either way kind of strange. Uh, I'm looking forward to then to the... I hope the June update is going to, like, fix a lot of the bugs. I don't know. Let's... Who knows? But the idea, as I said already, is going to be that we're using the Flying Fortress on the back end, so we can already put the Flying Fortress in. And then we're going to have, again, like a... The right card dive, if you want to call it like this. We cannot use as many right cards because we use, need to use a couple of giants then as well to tank. And the cool thing this time around though, which is really like, you ha I have to say, like as soon as you're getting to Capital Hall level 8, uh, where we are right now, it is so powerful that you can bring two of the main spells. Like, you can bring a rage and a heal, you can bring a double rage, whatever. It is insane how strong this is. Like it's, this is really boosting up your offense a lot. But for us, I think this army looks pretty solid. I'm not 100% sure about the about the ram. Um, where can we use that? I feel like one cleanup barbarian at the bottom side and then one cleanup barbarian at the top side. I feel like so two barbarians are better. We cannot really use the ram anywhere because where would you where would, where would you use it, right? Like where should we use it? Let's start with the heal to make sure our troops can actually enter the core without having too many problems. And then we're going to have later the rage. Like that's, I think, the best approach overall. Let's have everything in. Uh, let's have everything get ready to enter the base with that jump spell. Jump obviously lasting all the duration. So we have nice and easy access to the base. And now the rage, as everything is getting covered, 
And again, we're taking down all of the air bombs, we're taking down all of the air defenses, so our flying fortress then is only having to face pretty much those top spear throwers at the, around the top side, and that is pretty much it. Otherwise, Kina Baron, we've already said it, that's what the purpose of this Bad Baron is for. And then we have our two splitting. Yes, there we go, another spear thrower is going down. Air bomb is going down. Things are looking really good for us that we should be really easily, to be honest. Smash this base within two attacks. That's looking good. I mean, obviously, as always, we would like to have as many troops staying alive as possible. But I think that's not the biggest deal, right? Like, that's not the biggest thing to take a look at. Um, let's see how that's going to work. Yeah, that that's done. That's done. We have no air defenses left, so everything looks good. Our cannon course is going down, unfortunately, which means a little bit of extra bonus gold is not. It's getting denied, uh, but it's going to be the three star. So that's awesome. That's the main thing we were looking for, those two attacks. But as well, I think we should now take a look at the defensive side. Because I already mentioned at the beginning, this video is not about only me attacking. But as well, taking a look at how others are attacking our bases. Because last weekend, we have not gotten a single defense, right? Like, we have not gotten any defenses. And today, we already have gotten a couple of defenses, which is kind of cool. All of the attacks so far. Okay, that district not in two, so that's something we should for sure look for. Otherwise, always in two. So that's already a good start for us into the right weekend. But you can see as well, Stephanie Cup is actually attacking us. So Stephanie and Muitaba. And so far, I'm really happy about the defenses. Obviously, they're going to do, do um, better and better over time with like learning the bases and everything. But the first couple of bases looked really good for us as defenders. Now, I want to show you guys uh, some base tricks, which are still possible to do. And uh, you might already know the maze trick right but this one is something new which you might have not noticed those two words are the only important ones the other words are i already replaced them by now but um the important thing is that there is no buildings around the top side this trick i have seen that on twitter as well from leon again who came came up as well with the idea of those mazes overall so the idea of this one is that the the ram are not connecting to the to the marked walls like the wall where's this this one and the two they're not getting targeted this is what the attacker thinks what is going to happen but because there's no buildings around the top side the the ram is just going from this to the left side and with that the attacker has to attack from this far left side except if they're using a frost spell but to be honest the majority of attackers are not want to i don't know like I don't want to say they're not smart enough, but I guess they just don't want to try it. Whatever, I, I don't know, whatever. But those guys did a really interesting thing. Like Stephanie Cup, they came in a lot of times with those Hawk gliders. Which I felt like was really interesting because um, I kind of like ranked them as not as strong. And to be honest, sometimes I'm kind of surprised. Yes, yes, obviously this is not the best use case of just sending them in straight into a double rocket artillery. But otherwise, I was really surprised how good they actually work. So we're going to take a look at those replays on this base. And as well onto our, uh, onto our um, Capital Peak and see how they approach those in the first rotation of attacks. And you can see already, they switched kind of quickly to the Flying Fortress. And one thing I have to say, they have the Flying Fortress already on level 4. Uh, we are getting there slowly, getting this on level 4 as well. And I have to say, as soon, as soon as you're getting the Flame Fortress to level 4, and having the double rage unlocked, it is pretty broken. Like, it is insane how strong this is. And I might have to rearrange the ranking again, because I feel like Flying Fortress with the rage is scary. It is incredibly scary. And especially if you're able to have two, which means, like, those rages are even more efficient. It is getting really, really hard to defend those, because, I mean... It's not easy. <laughs> Trust me, it's not easy at all. But so far, I'm pretty happy uh, with how the base did. Um, as we were showcased in the beginning, it ne they needed overall four attacks. The first couple of attacks obviously um, took not out too much percentage, but still was overall pretty good. He used the lightnings, interesting enough. So now the frost spell. Uh, but yeah, with those rages now, and the problem is they have not used anything to take down the buildings in the front. So this means they have to send in the troops all the way. And the deployment area has not increased just yet. So that's like the important thing. But yeah, I want to really show you guys this layout. Because I feel like there's a lot of people out there who are really loving the base bidding aspect of this game mode at the moment. I have to say I'm one of them. I freaking love the possibilities you have as a base builder. As a defensive base builder. And 
it is just crazy how much impact you can have and just the tricks with the walls and how and where buildings are and that you can uh, uh, manipulate that's the word <laughs> those are the words which i'm missing uh, if you can manipulate the pathing of certain troops it's giving you a huge advantage and that's like the, the cool thing overall uh, about this so I think this is going to be the last stack on this base, if I remember correctly, let's see. Um, I think, yeah, with the rage and again, super dragons are another air troop which are coming in and are incredibly powerful. And you have to be careful with how you're placing your buildings on this back end. Obviously, the, the buildings are really close together, so it's obviously a three star. But I want to take a look at as well the capital peak where they struggled quite a bit and was pretty much my capital level seven base because I'm completely honest, I had I, I was kind of expecting that we're not going to get attacked again on this weekend. So I just threw a couple of defenses together and tried out different things. And there again, coming in with those hog, glider, uh, hog gliders. And hog raiders, I'm sorry, they always mess up the, the, the names. But it's really interesting because, I mean, yes, that they, they took overall five attacks. Uh, the level 7 version um, overall, I think the best attempt so far everyone did either in the right weekend or in front of challenges were like four attacks so um yeah i mean five attacks isn't too bad so considering that they're just pretty much only spamming in those hogs it's pretty impressive like i don't know it's kind of crazy uh, especially considering that as i said the other strategies did not work any better so it is surprising really surprising to me um, how strong they actually are and that they're actually kind of viable considering that they're only level three so they have still like they're going to get way stronger and with those mass range and heal and everything supporting them i think you can delay a couple of them just to make sure that you're always pretty much stunning the defense because that's the next thing you can stun those really crazy big defenses like the capital hall like the um like the rocket theories and things like that so it is kind of scary it can be kind of scary but at the same time it sometimes looks i have to admit looks kind of foolish just setting everything in uh like they do but i mean somehow it's working i guess i mean it's still working way better than <laughs> what, what some other clans are doing i guess but yeah you can see with the capital peak the stun effect onto this capital peak is kind of massive but then again the rocket theories are a big problem for those hog riders so uh, that's another thing where they have to be really careful about but yeah clearing out some more beings so we can place the next wave of those hogs deeper inside the base i guess and then we see what they're going in with next so far they really kept their i don't know they really kept uh, the love for for those hogs alive i guess let's see uh if anything is going to change or if they're going to have anything different of approach because, as I said, on some of the bases, they use a lot the... What was the name again? The the Flying Fortress. And yet, they're coming in again with Hawks. That is... Surprise! <laughs> it looks... Just the screams. Just the screams of those Hawks is so funny. It's so funny. The healer's in. Yeah, he's going to take down the Rocket Artillery for sure as well. And I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure as an opener how strong this is. But to be honest, later on, it can actually work. Like, if you maybe for capital peak level 10 where you have one frost and one heal maybe that can work where you're frosting the splash damage and then you can heal because the splash damage is not shooting as quick anymore that might work i'm not really sure and then they switch okay so they switch to the flying borders to the back you can see why i'm talking like why i'm saying it's so strong like take a look at that just the double rage and there's pretty much nothing the defenses can do about this it's crazy how strong they are but yeah that's pretty much our start into the right weekend i hope you have a wonderful right weekend as well a lot of loot hopefully and i was kind of um it's kind of cool again that you're getting attacked and especially uh by by stephanie and Muitaba. that's really cool as well so thank you so, so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i wish you guys back tomorrow for the next one until then see ya and bye bye